Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight for the District 211 Virtual Career Expo. My name is Susan Turner, and I'm the Career Advisor at Palatine High School. Also here with us tonight is Ms. Miriam Castro, the College and Career Counselor for Palatine High School. We will be moderating this evening's session. Hi, so I'm part of the Student Services Department at Palatin High School. So we have um, many members of our team to help with your son or daughter's career exploration. Our counselors guide our students with information, specific information to their goals and their career path. Um, so as a college counselor, um, I help support students with additional um, services, programming, um, and other tools. Um, lastly, our career advisors provide information needed for internships, job opportunities, career assistance, and they even provide field trips to different um, career treks um, in our area. And then um, if you all wouldn't mind, uh, we would love to know who's here. Um, so I'm going to drop a link in the chat. Um, so if we could just take one, you know, 30 seconds to fill it out so we know who's here and who's represented, um, we'd really greatly appreciate it. All right. So tonight we have a wonderful group of speakers that will be discussing their careers in the hospitality and tourism industry. During the presentations, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, please drop them into the Q&A. If time doesn't allow us to get to your question, then I'm going to be touching base with the panelists um, to get the answers to your questions, and I'll be emailing the questions and answers out to all of you who are joining us tonight. So our speakers tonight are Ms. Jennifer DeFranco um, from Magical Vacation Planner, Ms. Jennifer Needham from Hyatt Schomburg, Mr. John Egert from Relish Catering Company and Ms. Katie Garcia from Ricardo's Restaurant. So without any further delay, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Ms. Jennifer DeFranco. Thank you. Um, so, all right, um, we're, Am I on mute? No, I'm not. Okay. So, all right. So, um, my name is Jen DeFranco, and I am a travel specialist with uh, Magical Vacation Planner, and I'm an independent contractor with them. So, I sort of run my own business um, while being hosted by another business so that I, um, they kind of carry some of the weight for me in terms of like uh, software and things that I need, which um, cuts down on some of my costs. So um, this is why I chose to go the independent contractor route. But um, as a travel agent, you would typically either start your own business or work for someone else. So a um, lot of self-employed travel agents out there is kind of how that goes. Um, but as far as my job goes as a whole, um, my my days are mostly spent um, dealing with clients who are looking to go on a vacation or um, inquiring about destinations that they don't know about. So I spend a lot of time researching destinations that I may not even know about sometimes. Um, if I've been fortunate enough to visit those places, then I give them my own experiences. I share that with them and I um, help build a trip itinerary with them so that they have a trip that they really enjoy. Um, I also, it, it really comes down to sales. It's a self-motivated job. Um, you don't start and travel with clients. You kind of generate clients over time. Uh, word of mouth is great. If you're doing a good job, then other people are going to recommend you to others. And that's always awesome. Um, it's a lot of administrative work, marketing work. Um, it really encompasses a lot of different things uh, in my day. Um, today, I think I spent a lot of time building ads that I'll be promoting over the next couple of weeks on my social medias so that um, to generate more clients. So um, sales, marketing, admin, all of it. Um, how I got here, um, this is not the job I started out going after when I went to college. Um, I went to Illinois State and I graduated with a degree in English with a double minor in writing and speech communication. All of those things helped me with this job, but this is not the job that I started out in. Um, I started out in marketing uh, and sales. That's where I went right out of college. Uh, and then I did stay home when my kids were born and um, went back into the nonprofit world. And all this time I was traveling on my own and decided, gosh, that is really what I enjoy doing. And that is where my passion lies. So I went out and sought a new career in travel. So. Um, for the last six years, that's what I've done. I've been a travel agent. And uh, like I said, the degree that I got actually 
actually benefits me in the end because it's all about direct communication and being able to communicate with my clients. So that was uh, really, really helpful. But like I said, not necessarily where I intended to start uh, when I went to school. But um, let's see, as far as like, um, I think we'll talk about personality traits and what you would need to be in this career. Um, number one is customer service. Um, customer service skills are key. Um, good verbal communications, you're on the phone with people, you're communicating with people via email constantly. So being able to write well is important. Um, sales skills, uh, being persuasive. Uh, sometimes you might know that a resort is better than another for someone. So you wanna persuade them from something that their friend told them because you know it's gonna be a better fit. Um, so those types of things, um, attention to detail is huge. Um, if I put in a name wrong on an airplane ticket, Mm, the outcome is very bad for everyone. So we want to make sure that details are, are like key because those are so, so important. Um, good listening. Um, I talk with my clients, find out what they're looking for and try and find the perfect fit for their uh, vacations. And if, um, if I'm not listening to what they're asking for, then I'm probably going to suggest something that's not going to be a good fit. So um, that's always a an important one and maybe the desire to help people. Um, I, I love that about my job. I, I love seeing people on their vacations and I love hearing the stories about their vacations when they come back and that they had a great time and that I did a good job. So all of those things, um, you know, are key, I think. Um, knowing that you're self-employed, I mean, you just have to be a self-starter and be ready to take on some things that if you work for someone else, you may not have to. So um, I think that that is really important as well. But um, I think there's one more, oh, professional advice. I think that was a question I had on here. Um, my, my advice for you guys in terms of um, hospitality and tourism and just in general um, is where the job you get out of college, it may not be your dream job. It may not be the job that you have in your ultimate goals and set plans in your future, but um, you have to start somewhere and then you just have to work your way and prove yourself. So I think um, just making sure that you sell your skills that you have and make sure that people know that you're willing to learn, that I think is really important. So, um, and yeah, I'll be ready for questions whenever you're done, but I think that's it. Perfect, thank you, Mr. Franco. Okay, next we're gonna turn to Miss Needham from Hyatt. Schomburg. Oh, you're on mute. Still on mute. There we go. Hello. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm kind of new to Zoom. <laughs> so, <laughs> no um, okay. Uh, my name is Jennifer Needham, and I am the group sales manager here at the Hyatt in Schaumburg. Um, and I sell group rooms for this hotel. So when I mean group business, I mean... Um, so Jennifer, before, she does like the ones and twos... Um, traveling I do group travel as in companies have meetings and a bunch of people come to a destination like a hotel and they stay at a hotel and they meet and they utilize our meeting space so I'm the person who kind of puts that all together and sells that package um, my typical day consists of we get we get these things every day called an RFP. So an RFP is a request for proposal, and so essentially I take that information, I look at their needs and um, what we have available at the hotel, and I see if I can bid on it. So that's like one piece of it. The other piece of it is me soliciting business. So I go out into the market and I solicit local companies, businesses, um, anywhere from like email solicitation, phone solicitation, and person solic solicitation as well. So essentially it's um, helping these groups come to Schaumburg, come to the Hyatt, 
and have their meetings here. So we do all sorts of meetings. We do everything from corporate meetings, like say someone like a Verizon is having a corporate meeting or like right now we have a big dance competition in house. So um, there's different segments. I handle the corporate segment. So I do, you know, corporations and businesses. Um, so that is kind of my day to day and what I handle. Um, my education, I went to Columbia College downtown and um, I did not start out in hospitality. I went to school for music. <laughs> so I was a music and marketing major, thank goodness um, for the marketing part of it. And when I left college, I was in advertising for um, a couple years and then I fell into event planning and then event planning eventually led to hotel sales which I have been in hotel sales for about 13 years now. And I love it. Um, so as the Jennifer before me said, you know, sometimes, you know, what you went to school for isn't necessarily what you end up as. I thought I was going to be an opera singer and I ended up as a hotel seller. And I'm happy it turned out that way. Um, the personality traits that you need to succeed is you have to be ambitious. You have to be personable. You have to find connections with people because when people are looking to do a meeting with you and, and buy something as large as like a conference with you, they, they want to feel good about who they're buying it from. And um, I always say people like to buy from their friends. So, you know, it's like trying to make everybody your friend and create good business deals and, um, and, and keeping these relationships because they may meet one year and then they'll have another meeting and another meeting. It's all about building relationships, especially in the hospitality industry. Um, so the biggest thing I wanna say is when you go into, when you think you wanna be in the hospitality industry, try on a bunch of different hats, um, especially when you're young. Um, if you're in college and you're thinking you may wanna go into hotels, if you're able to work at the front desk or you're able to work in housekeeping, or operations, um, it's really good to get a sense of how an entire hotel operates. You know, you may think you wanna go into sales, but then you try something like the front desk and operations and that piece of the business and you decide you like that better. Try on a bunch of different hats. Um, I actually started out in convention services. So that was actually planning the conventions um, instead of selling them. And I did that for a long time. And then I went into sales and decided I really liked the sales part of it as well. So there's so many different avenues um, when it comes to working in a hotel. I know back when I was in college, there weren't many hospitality programs, but now like DePaul has a wonderful hospitality program. Um, college of DuPage has a wonderful hospitality program. A lot of schools within Illinois do have nice hospitality programs you can go into. I don't wanna say you necessarily need a degree in hospitality to get into hotels, but definitely communications, marketing, all those kind of things are kind of a recipe for success to work in a hotel. Um, let's see. And what I wish that I knew now, then what I know now is like, once again, try on different hats, um, make sure you're really looking at hospitality as a whole. There's so many different things you can do in a hotel. It's not just sales. Um, operations is a very important segment and culinary and engineering, like all sorts of um, different things you can try your hand at. And if you have the time and you're able to maybe call a hotel and see if you could shadow a sales manager for the day, see if you can shadow someone in the kitchen for the day. I mean, when you can, I highly recommend that because then you kind of get a firsthand knowledge of um, what you're getting into. So I hope that helps and happy to answer any questions anyone has about um, being in hotel sales. All right, thank you, Ms. Needham. All right, now we're gonna turn to Mr. Eggert from Relish Catering Company. Thank you, Susan. Yes, my name is uh, John Eggert. I'm the executive chef and owner at Relish Catering Kitchen in Schaumburg. Uh, we're a full service catering company. We do um, all kinds of different events from uh, just like typical, uh, you know, short meetings for corporate. Uh, we do home orders, uh, graduation parties. Uh, we even get into, you know, full scale weddings. 
and just basically, you know, everything in between. Anytime people need, um, you know, food for an event, we're, you know, we try to provide that uh, service to them because most times, and, you know, especially these days, people don't want to cook for 20, 30 people that they're having over at their house. They'd rather give us a call and we're happy to, you know, take the business. Um, we're a from scratch caterer. So everything we make, we make in house. We make all of our own sauces, our own dressings. Uh, we even make our own sausages, Italian, Polish, uh, bratwurst. We make, uh, we try to do everything we can um, in house and from scratch. Um, we have a staff of about 18 people uh, that work on all kinds of different levels of the business. There's, uh, you know, everyone from customer service, uh, you know, down to like prep and dishwashing. Uh, we have delivery crew, we have people who, you know, cook, who put orders together, uh, just a wide range, uh, range of skills and, um, you know, abilities that uh, we have on our team. Uh, my, my day to day, um, I'm kind of all a little bit of every, uh, everything. I'm in and out of the kitchen trying to, you know, help the chefs get the food out for the day, making sure everything is up to quality. Um, I'm involved in uh, inventory, ordering product in, um, checking that product, making sure it's up to our standards. Uh, I, you know, I'm working on developing uh, the menu, making sure that, you know, we're staying on trend and, you know, we're, we're providing a, the best product that we can for our customers. Uh, marketing to new clients, uh, trying to find, you know, new business, uh, helping our uh, event coordinators uh, plan their events out. Um, sometimes we're planning uh, weddings two years in advance. We had um, a couple come in today for a sample and their wedding isn't until November of 2023, but they wanted to, you know, get it booked and everything. So we kind of put out a nice spread for them, let them uh, taste everything that they wanted to taste, answer any questions. And it looks like, you know, we're, you know, they were happy with everything and they're going to be booking with us. So um, I also handle all of the um, HR issues, any hiring, um, you know, training, kind of overseeing that. Um, my position currently, I'm trying to transition a little bit more out of the kitchen operations uh, since our company is growing and work on more of a broader picture for the business uh, development and marketing and just kind of putting in, uh, getting everybody acclimated into their position and, you know, kind of working together um, to, you know, make the customer happy. Um, I started cooking when I was eight years old. My mom, I asked my mom for some more scrambled eggs and she said, well, why don't I just show you how to make it? So I, you know, pulled up to the oven, I cracked an egg, I cooked it up and I ate it and my mind was blown. I was totally unaware that I could cook something and then eat it, which uh, combined my two favorite passions at the time of being eight years old. Um, I, I, from that on, I was cooking every Sunday. I, I made breakfast in bed for my parents. I, I trained my sister to be my waitress uh, slash dishwasher. And we just had like a little restaurant in my family, you know, for cooking for my parents every weekend. And um, from then on, I just, I loved cooking. I always loved, you know, um, making people happy with food. I got a job in high school working for a catering company and I just loved it. It was, it was so much fun. There was always something going on. I, I loved being on my feet. I loved interacting with people. I just, I love the instant gratification of making something for somebody and then bringing it to them and watching them eat it and enjoying it. And, you know, just, you know, being, being at a party. I mean, you know, you're, when you're in the catering business, most of the time you're celebrating happy occasions, people are in good mood. It's, you know, it's a, it's a fun business to be in. Um, in, uh, kind of in, uh, high school, I, was leaning towards being a chef. My mom, <laughs> she was in the hospitality business for a long time and she knew it was kind of a rough life. She, um, you know, she knew that it was long hours and everything. So, you know, she was kind of discouraging me from getting into it. I was, you know, I, I wanted to be in some part of it. So I got into business. I went to uh, Indiana University and um, I got my, my degree in business. I had an internship for about uh, between my freshman and sophomore year working in an office. And I hated it. I was like, I was so bored. They hired me for an entire summer and I finished the project that they had uh, for me in two weeks. And for the rest of the time, I was just kind of, you know, sitting around waiting for other stuff, trying to, you know, do whatever I could. And I just like, I, I knew I needed to get back into hospitality. So I, I tried to combine my love for food with the business degree. After college, I went to, um, got my business degree in entrepreneurship went to Kendall College, uh, which is a culinary school in Chicago, um, got my uh, associates in culinary arts, 
Um, during that time, I was also working at the Signature Room at the 95th, which is a restaurant uh, downtown Chicago. Um, it was kind of a both worlds, uh, you know, type of big thing. I was getting the real world experience of being in a restaurant and then also um, the kind of technical skills and things like that from culinary school. So I was able to kind of combine those things and, you know, kind of it was a good experience that way to, you know, kind of work through it. Um, I started after that at working at a um, executive chef of a catering company and started my own catering company in 2013, just me and one other person. Um, and we've, you know, grown it over the years to you know, what, what it is now. It, COVID kind of slowed us down a little bit uh, just because people weren't having parties. People weren't in the office and those were kind of our bread and butter. But, um, you know, what we did was we kind of pivoted towards uh, grocery delivery. Uh, we were doing meal kits. We did kind of like a mystery chopped basket type challenge for people and stuff. So, we, we, we kind of kept people engaged and, you know, trying to keep all my employees, you know, employed and, um, you know, kind of making sure that they were, you know, happy and healthy with everything. And we've, it seems like we've kind of made it through, um, you know, the, you know, last year was busier. It looks like this year is going to be even busier. So, you know, we're kind of looking forward to that. Um, kind of some traits I feel like are important. Um, a passion for, for food, uh, definitely a passion for hospitality. And, you know, when I, when I think of that, I, I always think of this making people, making others feel comfortable, making them, you know, feel like they're welcome, um, you know, making them happy. It's, you know, it, it, it's a, something that's deep inside me that I've always, always wanted, you know, I always, I, I love making people happy with food. It's the instant gratification. It's just something I've always, you know, thought was, uh, you know, what I'm passionate about. Um, I think in the culinary world, being having a good sense of curiosity and a love of learning is important. Um, there's always something new to learn in culinary. You're constantly learning new recipes. Um, you're constantly learning about new aspects of the business. Just there's always something new to learn, which is for me, I, I've always loved to learn new things, keep learning about food and cultures and, you know, different recipes and styles of cooking and stuff. Um, and then working in it with a team, um, you're definitely, when you're in the kitchen, when you're, you know, serving a, you're serving an event, there's a lot of teamwork. There's a lot of interpersonal skills. It's, you know, if you like working with others in that way, you know, working in a restaurant, working at a catering company, definitely, you know, will you'll use those skills. Um, and you know, it's, it's fun. I like, I love, I enjoy my team. I, you know, we all get along, which is not always something that happens in the, in the restaurant business, but you know, it's uh, something that I've kind of created over the years, a culture of, you know, helping each other out and, um, you know, keeping on each other, just trying to make sure that uh, the customer's happy at the end of the day. Um, you know, some advice, uh, I would say, you know, always celebrate your wins, um, learn from your mistakes. It's, it's easy in this business to kind of remember the customers that weren't happy, you know, though they kind of stick out in your mind, but you got to always remember, like, there's so if you know if you're successful and you're you're putting out a good product, there's so many other people out there that um, you know will enjoy it. That you got to just kind of keep remembering, stay positive, think about those customers. Um, I always try to do something to push myself out of the, my comfort zone. Um, you know, whether it's starting a new, you know, a, a starting this business in general was definitely a big jump. But um, you know, taking on different aspects of the business. Um, you know, working, working with different people, bringing people on to, you know, uh, kind of create new aspects of our business. We started doing um, on-site corporate catering, where we're an exclusive caterer at a business. That was something we've uh, started doing the last year and a half. Um, and then just, you know, kind of starting small. Like I said, we started with two people and we've grown it, you know, to what it is. And we're looking to probably expand our business, hire about five or six more people this year. But that may seem daunting, but you just kind of have to start small, just, you know, achieve those little goals, try to, you know, just try to make things a little bit better every day. And you'll be surprised of, you know, what that hard work can do. So I just wanted to thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So our last panelist, Ms. Katie Garcia, is a restaurant owner and she is very busy tonight in her restaurant working. So she was going to try and join us. Um, but so if she jumps on, she jumps on, but in the meantime, um, you know, we can, we can get some questions answered. And I think, you know, a, a question, um, for Miss, oh, there she is. Hi. 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 
I'm uh, finishing up a bar tab here, so hi. Oh, thank you. Thanks for jumping in. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's a busy night, so this is part of being a restaurant owner, especially for a small family business. That, um, especially post-COVID, I'm working multiple roles. So my name is Katie Garcia. My husband and I are the owners of Ricardo's Restaurant in Schaumburg. And um, I originally managed here 33 years ago, and we bought the restaurant about 19 years ago actually met my husband working here and came back and bought it. Day-to-day uh, -day duties, uh, you could start with today that I delivered several catering, catering orders this morning, helped uh, the front desk for lunch. I ended up having a meetup group come in that was a little more people than we expected. I've been bartending, which I've been doing all through COVID and um, I'll be here to close tonight. So it's from seven in the morning till about 10 at night. So it's pretty long days. Um, but we love what we do. So it doesn't really feel like it's that long of a day compared to what it sounds like. And also we are the owners. So we're in a little bit different position. I've always worked as a manager most of my life. It tends to be long hours, but if you enjoy what you're doing, it, it just doesn't feel like that. Um, as far as my pathway, I started working in a restaurant in high school. My first job was as a server at a restaurant in Woodfield and, uh, I left home at 17. I was already making enough money to pretty much support myself at that point in time and uh, started becoming a head server at uh, sorry, uh, a restaurant called Lucky's in Woodfield Mall. So I did scheduling, training, uh, hiring, and serving at an age of 19. Um, by 19, I then started a business. So I've always been an entrepreneur. So um, I started a construction company with an old friend. And from there, I was doing property for at a certain point and went back to restaurants. That's how I started working at Ricardo's. Um, and then left Ricardo's, worked in the airline industry as a manager, worked through 9-11, was an operating manager for them, and uh, did security, and then left there to buy the restaurant. So my education is school of hard knocks. So working my way up in multiple positions. And if I had anything to do differently, I would have probably um, tried to focus more on school at different points, just to help with having a little bit better business knowledge. I think in all the different roles that I was in, I always focused on that there's a monetary value to a business. And if you're basically not profitable, you're not gonna be in business. So if you're not sure what career path you wanna go on, I think having a great base knowledge of business while you're working in a field is a great way to move ahead. And like they had said earlier, you know, working in different roles, different positions, it also gives you a much better understanding of a business when you work in every position. And even through COVID as I have um, had to help in a lot of different areas, it helps me see what ways we could possibly improve on or what ways, you know, are easier, harder for the staff. As far as the personality trait for me, it's been to always be flexible, uh, determined, hardworking, um, and to have a personality that you enjoy people and you accept all kinds of different people in different roles and know how to work with them as an employee and also as customers. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah, as far as like, you know, your path, I guess the only last thing I should say is that I really feel that it's important to live within and work within your values. So um, wherever you are, I think that if you find a job or a line of work that aligns with who you are as a person and excites you and makes you feel good every day, that's the most important thing. So if that's the path that you're on, do everything you can do to make that a career. Or for me, I always love just owning my own business. If that's what you like, that independence, that creative side of it. Um, so follow your instincts and go with your heart. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time. Time out of your busy night for us. Um, all right. Thank you, everybody. That was wonderful advice um, and, and so inspirational for our students. Um, again, anyone watching from home, if you have any questions, please go ahead and drop them in the chat. And I'm going to share my screen again. And Ms. Castro is gonna take over and let you know about some next steps. Yeah, so thank you. Um, thank you to all the panelists. Uh, it was so great to hear from all your experiences and you know, students um, and parents, it doesn't end here. There's still more that you can do. 
So there's a lot more career exploration that you can do in the high school. Um, this card is really, really helpful just to give you some suggestions um, on how to just generate your interest, some different career possibilities. Um, and a tool that we all want you to just really use is Zello. It's available on all the students' apps. It's free to the students. Um, they get to explore the different careers. They can look at the majors, colleges, um, what, you know, the job earnings, the job outlook. Um, it's just a wonderful resource. Um, another thing that you can do is schedule a meeting with your counselor just to kind of develop your plan. I know juniors, we try, um, as counselors, we try to meet with our juniors this spring. Um, also, please use our career advisors. They have so many wonderful um, resources for all of you. Um, they have speakers, um, those career tracks. Um, so they just please, um, every building has one, um, access to someone, um, please, they're wonderful resources. And then, um, yeah, so those are all really great things to do. And then the, probably the last thing is uh, just do a college visit, do a site visit. Um, if you see somebody doing something that looks really fun, ask them, how did you do that? How did you get there? Um, those are all really great things to kind of help you get to reach your goals. All right, thanks. Ms. Castro. So just as a reminder, recordings of this and all the other sessions will be available on our website. So if you joined us late or um, you wanted to watch another session that's running concurrently as this one, you'll have the opportunity to do so. So thank you again to all of our panelists um, who joined us tonight and all of our guests who joined us as well. Um, have a wonderful rest of your night, everybody. <laughs>